Hey guys, what's up? It's Ironfly Jake, and today I am here to talk to you guys about how you can be handling the zombies in the world of Daisy just a little bit better because this game is a zombie survival game at its core, or infected survival game, um, if we're going to be technical. But, uh, and the zombies have been revved up a decent amount for this beta update and for 1.0. Um, and you're going to find a lot of custom servers that have more zombies than other servers. Um, and on those servers, you're going to want to know what to do when you fire your gun and you get swarmed by them. Um, you're going to want to know what to do when you got these one-on-one -on -one situation and you're low on health and you don't want to lose any extra health than you, you know, you want to retain as much as you can. Um, so that's what I'm here today to tell you is how to handle these zombies better. And if you already know how, maybe you can find a few tips I left out and leave those in the comments. Um, but I'll be curious to see if you guys already know everything I tell you. Hopefully for some beginners out there, you learn a thing or two. If not, learn it all. Um, so here we go today to talk about how to deal with zombies in DayZ standalone. First off, if you get one thing out of this, I want to start with saying headshots do matter. They do more damage often. Sometimes, I swear, it doesn't register. Obviously, this is Daisy we're talking about, so you're going to run into those sort of things occasionally. Um, but the headshots matter. They do sometimes even one-shot. I have the splitting axe and sledgehammer recently, um, those larger weapons. Uh, if you hold shift as you do the attack, you'll, you'll do a heavy attack, um, especially if you're running, you can do a heavy attack, um, and that damage to the head will sometimes kill them in one shot, and that's real easy. Um, on top of that, quick little tip, always check the zombies for loot. Um, I'd say one in three, one in four zombies have food on them, ammo, uh, a can opener, uh, bandages, etc. Like, there's really good stuff you can find on these zombies, so it's always worth checking their bodies. Now, that isn't that isn't a tip on how to deal with them, but it's how to deal with them after you've freaking taken care of them. And in this video, we're going to be talking about how to take care of them some more. I felt it was worth throwing in there that one way to deal with zombies is to avoid them overall, um, and or at least the most you can. So this you can do by crouching, crawling, um, not sprinting in general, and apparently even wearing clothing that makes you less visible to the zombies. But for the majority of this video, we're more so focused on when you actually have to deal with them, more so in combat. But like I said, if you can avoid them at all costs and you're not going to be crossing paths with them, that's honestly the easiest way to avoid damage to yourself. Uh, although sometimes it's more optimal to go ahead and check for loot on the zombies or take them out before they actually go after you. And that's what a lot of this video is about, is actually dealing with them when they come after you or when you go after them. So stay tuned. Now, in a little bit here, I'm going to have a live commentary clip of where I approached a military base, and um, I just go through my thought process as I deal with the zombies on and off, um, as I go about the base. There's not too many of them, but I talk about if there were a bunch, and just, there are some there. And it also relates, of course, to how you would deal with the zombies in the occurrence that there's players around as well, because if you're at a military base, you always have to consider the option that there's players around. And these zombies, while one-on-one, -on -one, they're not that dangerous, they pose risks to attracting more zombies, because, you know, in a group of them, you can be hit kind of get stuck getting hit by multiple zombies, get a lot of damage done, they slow you down, um, <clears throat> you know, you hit yellow health and you're limping around, it's even easier for them to get on you, uh, stuff like that happens. Um, and then on top of that, the zombies, even just one zombie can easily alert other players of your location. So a lot of times you need to start by taking the initiative, and I'll be ch talking about this in that live commentary in a second, um, but real quick to touch on it, a lot of times you'll have a zombie in front of you and <clears throat> you're going to have to go up and go across that zombie's path, and that zombie you know will see you. Now, Nine times out of ten, it is always better, uh, so actually ten times out of ten, seriously, it is better to take the initiative and attack the zombie before it goes to you. So I'm talking like before the zombie's running at you, flaring its arms, it is so much easier for you to go ahead and sprint at that zombie and take the first hit, um, especially for you guys on consoles. Like I bet it's a little harder to do combat with the controller. Maybe it's not, but if it is, this is what I'm talking about. Like I know it's a lot easier to get that first hit. So when you see that zombie stagnant there and you know you're going to have to walk past it or you know it's going to see you and alert somebody of your position, um, go ahead and take the initiative initiative these zombies when they see you a lot of times they'll throw their arms up and let a roar out and then that, that's like for one it can alert the other zombies it actually can that's a really cool feature and for two it can easily easily alert other players like oh shoot there's a dude here uh let me just look for that zombie sound and then watch the zombie run straight to your location um but for if all they hear is the sound of like an axe hitting the zombie um for one it's much quieter so like they probably aren't even going to hear it and if they do hear it it's only one to two noises in which case they're not going to be able to place the direction as easy um and it's not going to attract more zombies so always take the initiative that is if you only take one thing away from this video if you're right here take that away leave go whatever abandon me it's fine uh no but really just that is the biggest thing is to take the initiative with the zombies and it's something that's really rang true through daisy and its history and you even see this in shows like the walking dead they they don't a lot, they, a lot of times they'll run up and stab the zombie in the head before it can spin around and stop walking to them um but even in daisy the zombies are actually more powerful than zombies you see in traditional shows like the walking dead where they're much slower much more stagnant and daisy these things are hopping over walls they're sprinting at you um and, and yeah they're, they're just a lot more powerful um but they're still not that bad one-on-one -on -one. so like i said one-on-one -on -one, make sure you're going for headshots 
headshots. Um, and then also there's a small aspect of the game where you can hold S as your, you, you have your weapon out and you'll do some sort of block um, to block the zombies from hitting you. Uh, this is fairly useful if you get caught like with a surprise zombie up against you and you want to kind of recuperate your plan on how you're going to take them out. I mean, really, it's not that hard. I don't mean to pers- I don't mean to put it out there like, oh, zombies are so difficult and you need expert skills to take care of them. Um, so because, no, they're not that hard and anybody can kill the zombies. But the problem is when you have five of them on you, you know you're going to have to fight five, you know, five separate zombies you're going to have to kill to get through this military base. You want to take them out one by one, and you want to minimize the amount of times you get hit because a lot of times, you know, five hits from a zombie is going to make the difference in a gunfight with the guy you find at that exact same military base, and you want to minimize the amount of damage you're taking from them, um, especially at lower health. And if you didn't know, when you have to heal your character up, you're using more food and water to heal up, um, so it's more efficient overall to take less hits, even if you heal up fast. So always, you know, keep this stuff in mind, and for a game like DayZ, it's always good to have these tips in your pocket. And going from here, I'm going to go ahead and go into that live commentary for you guys to see my thought process as we go through this military base at the Starry Sober, I believe, area. Um, Pretty interesting and just kind of good to see how you should navigate. Um, Some good tips overall, and I bet a lot of you guys play the same way I do, and I'm curious to see if you do. So enjoy this. So I'm recording this live in the flesh. We're going to see if we survive here, but I thought I'd give you a quick tutorial live, you know, I don't want to keep saying in the flesh, of how to handle zombies, because I'm guessing this military base has a few. And this is a circumstance where you want to handle them properly because you don't want to get caught in a firefight with zombies chasing after you. And you don't want them to be the reason your position gets given away. So I'm coming in here. There's one outside there. And he's facing the other way, so we're good to sneak on in here. I'm going to switch back to my main gun. But keep in mind, you do not want to shoot zombies with your gun. Uh, and that's like a last case resort. You know, if you've got a lot of them on you, that's what you got to do. Uh, but while you're in the base here, you're just going to want to go around. Currently not seeing that many zombies, actually. I think I heard one over there. Uh, yep, I do hear one. So when I come up on this guy, you want to attack the zombie before it attacks you if you're going to be crossing paths with it. So I haven't. Okay, I see it. Now he's probably going to see me as I go past here. You could maybe sneak past it. Um, but let's say you wanted to check these crates, right? You want to rush the zombie and go ahead and hold shift and do a shift attack and then keep that momentum up as you fight it. There you go. So he didn't land a single hit on me and. Honestly, it didn't make a huge ruckus. Hopefully, nobody heard that. Um, but that's that. Now, we also we want to loot that tent, right? So let's go ahead and move around here. Um, we, again, want to go to that zombie before it comes to us. That's the way to avoid the maximum amount of noise. And, see, he saw me, and I get a hit off. Yep, the key is getting a hit off before they get to you. Sometimes you'll even get a one-shot like that. Very handy, very handy. And you're good to loot. No one heard that, most likely. At least it's quieter than the other option. We're still moving around. No zombies on us. No hits yet. And again, guys, I could have two zombies chasing me right now. And if you get two on you at once, you try to outrun one, all of a sudden you're going to really have a problem because you're going to be having um, a lot of noise. you got to fight two at once, which means you're getting hit by the other one as you hit one. It's uh, it's honestly slower overall um, experience, so you want to avoid that at all costs. You want to take them out one at a time. Zombies aren't that bad by themselves. Um, they're bad when you get into numbers of them. Again, you know, you don't want to skip out on these tents over here, so we're going to go loot the tents. You know, you don't have to worry. No zombie should deter you from it. Um, again, I'm going to sneak. Oh, he sees me, so I'm going to rush him before he gets a chance. And there we go. I still get the hit off before he hits me. Um, he's being a little buggy here. But, and I think we're still going to take him down. Let's see. Wow, this guy actually got two hits on us. I believe that was because of a little bit of bugginess, though. I don't really want to blame that on myself. You know, I'm just perfect, so no, I'm just kidding. Uh, there we go. There's one down. Again, we've cleared out. Um, three or four already. That guy's roaming away over there. He should be good. Getting some pretty crappy loot from this place, though. Um, I'm wondering if it was freshly looted. But that's that. So, um, while we're on the topic, though, I want to go ahead and demonstrate what would happen if you see a zombie and you try to outrun it because it doesn't work out too well. Now, in this server, I have unlimited sprint. Um, but what will really happen is, oh, you see the zombie, he sees you. Don't wait for him to come to you, actually. We're not, we're not going to do that running. We're going to wait for him to come to us. You can hold S to block, as I'm doing here. Um, and it does block the hits most of the time. Still, sometimes they get through, and you might get two or three on you. The problem with this, though, is you're not doing damage back to him, right? So when you go to do damage back to him, often he's going to get a hit on you when you decide to hit him back. So you want to wait till you got space in between you, and there we go. See, like, he still got a hit on me. So personally, I'm not a fan of the, uh, the defending method against him. 
I think it just delays the hit. And if you can actually move up on them and get the hit on first yourself, you're going to actually save yourself a hit or two. Um, you know, you don't want to end up bleeding or just taking any unnecessary damage, especially if they ever add in infections or whatever. Like, you can just avoid that at all costs. And there we go. So we just moved to that military base um, without taking many hits from zombies. And honestly, a couple of hits were there just to demonstrate to you. Um, you can always sneak around. You know, you can hold C, and it is harder for them to see you a little bit. But personally, I don't think that's the best way to do things either because then when you do end up having to shoot at somebody, you're just going to have a zombie coming to you. So it's honestly a lot of times better to just go ahead and take them out if you know they're going to be an issue in the future. So that's how I handle that. So anyways, guys, this has been how to deal with zombies in DayZ standalone. And again, it's not like it's the hardest thing to do, but changing the way you do it can help your gameplay overall, make it a little less annoying to get more food to deal with that, you know, limping around, all this stuff. You know, it's little changes can make a big difference in the end and make the game more enjoyable. Overall, if you enjoyed, if you want more tutorials, make sure to drop a like on the video and let me know what sorts of things you'd want to hear more advice on from me, um, a Daisy player with thousands of hours in the game. And just, I really enjoy the actual, just getting better at the survival aspects because honestly, it's not that hard to get better at them. And once you do, you can focus on more of the other stuff you find fun in, such as PVP, uh, navigation, etc. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching and make sure to subscribe for more Daisy content. And I'll see you guys in the next video.